Hello, children of God. This is Genesis. We are getting to know him. All right. Today is going to be a very, very, very powerful teaching. Um, I will not make this message very long, um, but I will give you what God is saying concerning um, this kingdom marriage. Now, just as a disclaimer, I want to say that this is not going to apply for everybody. There are people who is in position for marriage and God has spoken to them. Okay. So this is not going to be a message for everybody, but this message is for many. Okay. This is why you're joining these fast. This is why you're gravitating to all of these words because the devil loves distractions. How fitting is it for the devil to give you a prophetic word um, saying that you're supposed to be in marriage when God may be having you, you, you may need to be in a season of fasting, but you believe because a prophet or a prophetess told you that this is your season for marriage when it could be your season of fasting and praying. Okay. So we don't measure our life. We don't measure because you should be measuring everything that you do according to what the Bible says concerning you. Now I am going to give you some very, 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 um, I'm going to give you a good passage of scripture. So here's what I want you to understand. Holy Spirit, I'm just asking that you just speak directly through me. I'm asking that everything that you need for me to say on this YouTube, that it just flows in Jesus name. All right. Just like to say that. So I want you all to begin to measure your life according to what the Bible says concerning you. So, for example, if you get a prophecy, right, and you I'm going to make it very plain for you. So you get a prophecy and someone tells you a prophet tells you you need to stop gossiping. I want you to go and Google and look up Bible verses concerning gossip. That is how you measure OK, what this person is telling you. So a lot of you all will get prophetic instructions. A lot of you all get offended and you don't even actually go to God with it. You just take offense because you don't like the way um, it was packaged to you. You don't like the way it was sent. You don't like the person, the messenger who gave it to you. Right. So that's just a little nugget for some of you haters who follow me and watch me. <laughs> all right. So we're going to look at first Peter. Um, and this is going to be, I believe. Yeah, 1 Peter 3 and verse 7, okay? Now, listen to what Peter writes. It says, likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. The Lord has designed the role of husbands in such a way as to live according to knowledge with their wives, constantly gaining a better understanding of them. Husbands are to be learners of their wives. Notice that this passage says that this is the one of the ways that husbands show their wives honor. This is powerful. OK, so this is going to be a tip for any man that come across this and you read this right now. I'm going to read this to you in the go to passage on marriage roles. And this is going to be in Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. Paul commands husbands to love their wives three times. Anytime uh, something is repeated in scripture, it is to be taken seriously. That's a nugget as if the author is highlighting it for the reader. So this is why when I told you all, look at how many times God talks about feeding the homeless in the Bible. It should let you know that this is a serious matter to Jesus Christ. He really wants people to feed the poor. OK. All right. So that's just a tip. What Paul was talking about in this passage is probably very similar to anyone who has even had a small amount of exposure to biblical marriage and resources. OK. However, verse 28 might catch uh, some of us off guard because Paul says that he who loves his wife loves himself. I'm going to repeat that again. Now, this is in the go to passage. All right. So this is why this is another reason why I read different translations in the Bible, because it gives you a deeper understanding. OK. All right. So I just want the men that may come across this, that look at this and say, wow, you're supposed to love your wife like three times over. You will actually hinder your prayers, like your prayer life. If you don't respect and honor your wife, this is big. 
<laughs> this is huge. So I hope you all took that nugget serious, right? Okay, now, me being a lady, um, I only thought it was fitting for me to go to Proverbs 31. I'm not going to read all of this, all right? But I want to give you all just a description of a worthy woman. And this can be found in Proverbs 31. And I'm actually going to read at verse 10. It says, an excellent woman. One who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Who is he who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far above rubies or pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence and he will have no lack of gain. It says she comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil. All the days of her life should look for wool and flax. Her works with willing hands and delight. Okay, I'm going, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm going to go down to verse 25. It says strength and dignity, dignity, I'm sorry, are her clothing. Did you hear that? It says strength and dignity, dignity, why am I studying messing that word up, are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in her household. Okay. And does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired. So this lets you know, right, that a lot of you all who have kids, your children are not saved, right? They, Your kids don't even call you. You can't even get your kids to read a Bible verse. Why would God bless you with a kingdom spouse when your house is not even in order? Her husband also um, praises her as well. Many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but you excel them all. It says charm and grace are deceptive and superficial. Beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, reverentially worshiping, obeying, serving, and trusting in him with all fear and respect, she shall be praised. Listen to me. This is my prayer is that every woman who is in anticipation, you want to be married. You need to start reading Proverbs 31 every single day. It literally says, let me go back to this, because this is also another uh, key thing that I thought was so interesting. Right. Um, let me go down. It says. It talks about all of the things that she does. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 31 and 12. It says she comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil. <laughs> That's interesting, right? It says in verse 9, open your mouth, judge righteously, and administer justice for the afflicted and needy. Okay, this is also can be found in Proverbs 31. So let's read some of this. Let's go back to Proverbs 31 and 8. It says, give strong drink as medicine to him who is ready to pass away and wine to him whose life is bitter. Let him drink and forget his uh, poverty and no longer remember his trouble. Okay, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are unfortunate and defenseless. So listen to me. It's interesting, right? All of these different things are in this Bible verse. Now, we understand that wisdom is a spirit. We understand that this Proverbs 31, you can take this verse. You can meditate on this verse. There is so much meat, not even if you're looking for marriage, but just in general. OK, but these are some of the attributes. These are some of the things that God looks at. It says in verse 21, it says she does not fear the snow for her household. For all in her household are clothed in expensive scarlet and wool. She makes herself coverlets, cushions, and rugs of tapestry. Her husband is known in the city gates. So you have to understand something too. I find that interesting. So it's like her husband. So see, this is why when we talk about a kingdom marriage, right? And a kingdom spouse, one of the things that's extremely important is that you are both equally yoked. Because that's the reason why God said he will make your name great. But see, he can't make your name great until you start serving and actually following him when you're actually doing the things that he has called you 
to do. So this is why when you all are joining these demonic fasts, because that's what they are, what they what these fasts are designed to do is actually to distract you from the season that God has placed you in. That's for more than 95 percent of you. A lot of you all are still struggling with gossiping, slandering. A lot of you all do not do not um, have any fruit in your life. You don't, you're not productive. You are not getting up in the morning praying. You're not fasting. A lot of you all are still struggling with fasting for six hours. A lot of you all are struggling with just praying for an hour. So do you see how deceptive that is as to why some of you all are joining these fasts? A lot of you all, God has given you a lot of instruction to preach his gospel, to get on social media. You're still struggling. You're still afraid of how you look and how you sound. So you see how ignorant that is to actually join some of these fast concerned them kingdom spouses. And a lot of you all are not even connected to the right prophets because most of these prophets, they are not called by God. Why do you think in the Bible? Do you know this is so powerful, right? When Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, what did Jesus tell the devil? He said it was written. What did he do in that moment? That the Bible verses, because God says he exalts his word above his name. So every time you are connected to these people, you need to start measuring your character, your life. Measure it by God's word and what he's saying concerning you in this hour. If your life does not measure up to that, then I can assure you that you do not have a kingdom spouse on the way. You have a decoy, ma'am and sir, and that decoy is going to destroy your destiny. He's going to, it's going to put you on the back burner and you're going to set yourself back years when you may need to just go in a season of fasting and prayer for six months to a year, right? And God may want to prune and just change some things concerning you, right? So this is why I tell people all the time, you need to measure your life based on God's word, what God is saying concerning a thing, okay? Okay. A lot of the men who are married and you abuse your woman. I talk to a lot of women. God starts highlighting so many things to me. These women are being abused and they're in denial. They're lying to themselves, right? God would never put you in a marriage with somebody who is physically and verbally abusive to you to the point where he's actually caused you to have a spirit of rejection and low self-esteem. I've ministered to women who look like they were in their 50s and they were saying that they wanted to get a BBL. And it's like, why would you want to get a BBL to please a man? who doesn't even respect you. Okay. So I have to talk very direct to people because there is no other way of fluffing it up, but to be honest and open and direct with people and telling them what God is truly saying. Now, this kingdom marriage thing is a beautiful thing and is of God because that's also the other part to that. Because when you get connected to your kingdom spouse, not only is are you going to flourish, but you all are going to flourish together and you're going to do it in Jesus's name and you're going to advance God's kingdom. OK, because God really honors marriage. And we know this already because that also can be found in scripture. So the reason why I decided to make this video is for you all to start digging in the scriptures and start to measure your life. Right. So the last three things that God has called you to do, whether it's fast, whether it's wake up an hour early and pray, whether it's begin to give to the homeless. If you have not mastered the last three to five things that God has told you to do, and the only time you can fast is when you're corporately fasting with other people's ministries, you got a lot of work to do. I'm going to repeat that again. You have a lot of work to do. OK, so my prayer is that your spiritual eyes and ears will be open, according to Ephesians 1 and 18, that that spirit of divination that you have partnered with as a result of partnering with all these demonic ministries who have not been called by God, but they have been called by man. OK, and they've also been called by the God of this world, Lord KG, which I'm referring to the devil. OK, so my prayer is that you begin to study, to show yourselves approved. You begin to measure how you are, how you act on a daily basis. Right. Measure that with the word of God. If you are a woman and you are seeking to find a spouse, are you a Proverbs 31 woman as of right now? If not, then you need to go back to the lab. 
you need to go back into your prayer closet and you need to fast and you need to repent. A lot of you all need to repent for running to these ministries to join these fasts, thinking that you finna find a knight in shining armor when you are all broken. And some of you all, I'm even hearing that prophetically, that some of you need to go through therapy. Some of you all have been molested. Some of you all have been in very bad relationships prior and you have a lot of spirits. Some of you all need to go through deliverance. OK, so I know these are not the words that you wanted to hear, but I have to tell you as a true prophetess speaking what is on God's heart because he is grieved. I'm going to be honest. He is extremely grieved. OK, so that I, ho I hope and pray that this message not only convicted you, but it also makes you look at self and do a self-examination today and say, you know what? Let me stop with this fasting concerning kingdom marriage and let me work on my kingdom character first. All right. I hope this blessed you. I want you all to stay encouraged and get in God's word like never uh, before. He has really been telling me to have people repent. OK, because we really don't have as much time as we think we do. All right. Be blessed. Be encouraged. We will talk very soon.